Hello and welcome to The Public Good. This is Deja James from Partnership for the Public Good, or PPG, which unites over 330 community organizations working to build a better Buffalo. We're delighted to join you every Tuesday morning at 11.30 a.m. on Power 96.5 FM and Mix 1080 a.m. You can also watch full video of every show on our YouTube page. Follow PPG Buffalo on Facebook and Instagram for more information on how to access full video and podcasts of the show. And make sure to visit our great information on our website, ppgbuffalo.org. And before I introduce our guests, I want to let the community know that they're able to interact with us at info at ppgbuffalo.org. Send us a recording, send us an email, send us a message. We'd be happy to hear your thoughts, comments, or questions on anything we've talked about past, present, and future for our show. Um, Thank you so much, and we hope to hear from you. This week, we are joined by Franchelle Parker, Executive Director, and Max Anderson, Deputy Director of Open Buffalo, to discuss their plans for an ecology center on the east side of Buffalo. In the current times of global pandemic, mental health crisis, global warming, and more, it is now important more than ever that we have space to encourage our connection back to Earth, our health, well-being, and in an equitable and sustainable way. So I'm so excited to speak with you both. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so thank much you for that. coming up with this initiative. Um, I just want to give you the space to introduce yourselves um, and just talk a little bit about how you got into this work, but just giving you both the chance to introduce yourselves first to community. Cool. Thank you. Um, good to be back with our PPG peeps. <laughs> um Yep, my name is Franchelle, and how how did I find my way into social justice work? Yeah. Um, I think initially, initially through the church. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to a um, very community-centered church growing up, um, and that is where I received my political and community education. Um, so my today, my community work is still very much rooted in my faith that um, the work we do in the community is an extension of my ministry that, you know, is that's a part of why God still has me on the earth um, to help protect the land, the people, make sure that all of the bounty that he's left here for us that is accessible to his people. Um, So I think that that's how, you know, jobs change, organizations, boards change, but that doesn't why you do the work. Um, and I think of it as an extension of God's work. That's amazing. Um, as a daughter of a minister, I totally relate to all of that. <laughs> so I, I see you. Um, we're giving Max the chance to introduce himself also. Yeah, well, um, so yeah, I'm Max Anderson. I'm deputy director for Open Buffalo. I've been with the team since we started back in 2014. Um, I come out of a background in journalism and political science. Um, used to focus a lot on economic development, on community police relations, and on empowering everyday citizens with information and with a voice. Um, but Franchelle went a little bit farther back, than, so I'm gonna, I should go farther back and just talk about you know my upbringing. I grew up as a first generation American. Uh, my parents both from Jamaica originally. Um, so I was raised very aware of different social systems that we were a part of or that we were not naturally a part of and we're trying to f- uh, find our way into. Mm-hmm. Um, we attended AME Church uh, where I grew up in Albany and you know I learned a lot about community, about um, the liberation movement in the United States context. Um, I mar- you know I remember one of my oldest memories is marching on MLK Day um, through the uh, streets of Albany, holding hands with my brother and my dad and feeling really proud and feeling like I was something, part of something much bigger than myself in a way that I hadn't before. Um, And really, but where things really crystallized was when I became a father about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And I started to think about what, um, immediately started thinking about how am I gonna protect this little girl (laughs) like this second. Now I'm thinking about how am I gonna protect her even after I'm gone. Um, So the work that we're doing today, you know, we call it legacy work. Um, but it's like, it's super urgent and it's life-saving work. Yeah. The work that we're doing, especially around climate and around economic empowerment and racial justice is super important to me on a cellular uh, level. Yeah. And I, I love that you mentioned that it's legacy work because I think all of us can 
go back to someone we saw kind of doing that work, either in the church or in our community or in another space that we saw that kind of sparked that initial idea of, oh, I can I can try and do something to change things. Um, and that initial spark, whether you're younger, whether you're older, um, is really important for people to see, which is why I always like to start with this type of question and discussion on the show, because I think people don't understand how much power that they can have to try and because it really does start with us. Um, and I think a lot of times we feel powerless or, 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 you know, disenfranchised to do anything about something. Um, but we can demand that we have an ecology center on the east side of Buffalo. We can make demands. We can do, you know, take steps to, to make our world better and for us and for our children and for the future. So I, I think that that's great. I appreciate you both taking the time out of your lives to do this work, but also to be here today to talk about it specifically. Um, so I want to get into what the Ecology Center is, what your plans are, what your ideas are and, and vision for that space um, and and how the community can support you in that vision um, and, and what it really would mean to all of us. <laughs> yeah, I'll take a first crack at that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So uh, I want to go back to um, the word you just said in regards to legacy. Yeah. And this is the first generation. Like if we're if we're just thinking about um, the legacy that was left from our ancestors since the ending of slavery. Yeah. That this upcoming generation is the first generation since then that will actually have less human rights and less economic opportunities. And then this overarching threat of the climate crisis. Um, so we have to ask ourselves, like, what does this legacy for the first time in recent history, it's getting worse for the next generation. And I think most of us approach the work of wanting to make the future better for our children, for our grandchildren. Yeah. And now we're just holding the line. Yeah, they won't receive those improvements, um, and so that's um, that is some of the thought in the ecology center. Like just this past week, um, some of us stayed in the house for over a week, either because we um, we didn't have the ability to shovel heavy snow and get out of our homes. Um, there's so many different limitations and challenges that we'll be faced with with this climate crisis. So we have to start preparing today yeah right um we can't say well in 25 25 years it's going to be too late yeah right um so it means um when we talk about resilience or resilience hubs we've we've heard this concepts or maybe we haven't heard them right mm -hmm. but across the country these resilient climate resiliency hubs yeah are are popping up and i, I actually i don't like the word resilience mm -hmm. right because it insinuates that i'm bouncing back from something and well, I don't want to stop that initial hit. I don't want to have to keep bouncing back. Yeah. We need stability yeah. in our community so that we can move forward together. So but some of the concepts around resiliency is that um, we can't just talk about transitioning to clean energy. That's a piece of it. But we also have to talk about, well, how are we going to entertain ourselves? How how are we preserving and talking about our culture? Where are our learning centers? And so the resiliency hub model is that we're not just talking about transitioning to energy or stopping the climate crisis. We're also talking about all of those racial and economic conditions that exist in communities that have to simultaneously be taken care of. Yeah. Um, when we, um, we have a multi-tier at Open Buffalo, we have a multi-tier leadership development program and through our Just Transition trainings, we talk about um, what the word ecology actually means. And for us, we, we talk about it, um, that ecology means more than just science yeah. or nature. We're talking about it all. We're talking about entertainment. We're talking about communications. We're talking about how we govern ourselves, yeah. all of that. So we take that concept and plant it into a center that we're talking about, okay, well, where, where can black people specifically go in this community and feel safe? Yeah. 
um, where can we feed ourselves and have access to the knowledge and resources that we need? So that was that was some of the beginning thoughts yeah. in why an ecology center. Yeah. Um, but um, the the quick description of that would be um, we're looking to develop uh, 10 acres of land. Um, it'll be an indoor and outside indoor outdoor facility um, with places to sled um, put your snow pants on, come on and enjoy all the snow that we get. Yeah. Um, places to grow safe and organic food. Yeah. Um, places where we can teach each other and feel safe, be seen, be heard. Um, but then also utilizing um, state-of-the-art technology so that we're building new sources of energy for energy consumption into the future as well. I love I love multiple things you said. I'm going to bring up a couple different points. I love what you mentioned about holding the line, right? Because we're in a space now where even the rights that we supposedly do have or that people put upon us to have are being rolled back. Like yeah. things like affirmative action, things like spaces where we can talk about the truth of our history, different things like of that nature. And so trying to one sustain what we already trying to hold on to but like you said guarantee more and a better for the future and trying to do those things simultaneously is really really hard especially when you don't have something like this ecology center where it's a central hub where we build community because I think a lot of those community spaces outside of the church which also is having its issues right now as well in the modern day we don't have those central hubs anymore where we're building community. And so I love that you connect ecology beyond just science, but like social ecology, like what is the ecological structure of us as a people? Um, and so I love that you connect those dots because I think oftentimes, especially in climate justice spaces, it really is in a black centered space and, and it very much impacts us differently Um that I would say a lot of things impact us differently than it does anyone else or any other race. And so I love that you're trying to make a safe space for us to be able to discuss our specific needs um, and also for us to be able to build for our specific needs as well while fighting against the rollbacks that we're trying to fight against right now. Um, and I just think a space like this is such a healing and needed space Right now, yes. um, like yeah. just right now, I wish it was open today. <laughs> um, so I'm just so, so excited about that. But I'm just you you just have such an advanced, I think, thought process around ecology. And I just wonder how how did you all get to that space? You said you've Max, you've been there, yeah. you know, since 2014 with Open Buffalo. But how did you come up with this framework that really looks at the holistic picture of of black well-being of our social or societal well-being. Uh, so we are inspired by uh, what we call the just transition framework, uh, which is moving from uh, an extractive economy, an extractive e economic model to one that's holistic, that's sustainable, and that values people, planet, uh, and profit um, instead of profit over people and planet, which yep. is the current economic model, right? Um, and we were inspired by a lot of our folks in, in the West Coast, like um, Movement Generation, who have um, we've gotten some trainings from them, and we have some allies in, in those spaces as well, um, different regions of the country. So uh, we have folks pushing back against the oil refinery uh, industry in California, the uh, coal extraction in Kentucky, and commercial fishing in Alaska. Buffalo, we're trying to recover from the steel industry and our history of economic um, apartheid and systemic racism here. Yeah. Um, so to that end, I mean, everything is, we connect everything, racial, economic, and ecological. It's all, it's all intertwined. Um, one thing I want to lift up also is the green sector workforce development that we're planning. Um, we've been working on, uh, New York Renews. You're probably familiar with that campaign, yes. um, that, we eventually got the Climate uh, Leadership and Community Protection Act passed in New York State a couple of years ago. Um, that set out some of the most ambitious climate change mitigation goals across the whole map, right? New York is like leading the way along with California. We're trying to get to a zero emissions economy um, by 2040. How are we going to get there? Yeah. Who's going to get the work? Who's going to be qualified to get those type of jobs to transition our power grid and our entire economy? Yeah. 
Um, you know, we're, we're constantly seeing these large economic projects, uh, which have, um, you know, re hiring requirements, um, community, uh, sometimes there are community benefits agreements, there are project labor agreements, but like if we don't have folks in the pipeline who are qualified, certified, ready to work on those jobs, then our people aren't going to get those jobs. And yeah. um, if you think about training um, one person how to uh, to install solar arrays and how to do the back end side of solar, yeah. what's the potential impact, not just on that person's income, but on the quality of their home if they're able to upgrade their own home? and support people in their block or their neighborhood too. So um, we're also looking at, uh, and we are partnering with different groups that can do those kind of hard skills trainings, bring them here to Buffalo. Some of them are here already. Some are folks that we're going to be bringing in to partner with. Um, but that's the other side of this, right? We're helping people to develop a why and understand like, why why does this matter to me? Yeah. Like, why does climate matter to me? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to talk to you about annual um, temperatures or sea levels, and maybe it doesn't connect. But if we talk about your heating bill yeah. and the drafts coming through your house uh, every uh, month, like mine has been uh, the past month or so, then you're going to get it. And um, once people start feeling like, they're, oh, there is something I can do, um, we connect the we, what we call the head, heart, and the hands. Yeah. Um, so the knowledge is the head, the skills is the hands, and the heart is, you know, the heart. Yeah. Um, so we're really looking at people as like holistic beings, community as a holistic entity. Yeah. And how we can serve people and community at the same time. I love how you brought up the economic benefit because I think a lot of times the the anti messaging against kind of climate renewal and, and renewable energy and things are that it's gonna get rid of jobs like you know, the Trump. So like, we're going to get rid of coal and everybody's going to be poor and all this other stuff. Right. And so I, I love that you're saying actually it replaces an industry just with a new industry that's more sustainable and that can empower our communities. to even better their own homes, their own community and things like that. Um, because I do think there is a misconception. I've had this conversation before that black people don't care about climate change. Um, and so I'm wondering what you all's opinion is on that. Like, wh why do you feel like there's such a stigma that we aren't included in the climate change space and that supposedly we don't care about climate change? And why should we care about climate change? Everyone I know cares about climate change, but I don't know if it's a generational thing. I don't know. I don't know what the disconnect is, but I, <clears throat> I think that is um, misinformation and fake news. Yeah. Um, there was a um, survey specifically of black mothers yeah. um, where climate change in the environment was um, in the top three of the most important issues in the upcoming election. So you can't say that, especially black moms, that we're not at the table and leading in these conversations. Um, I think that that's just a deception. Yeah. That the opposition is using to keep us out of the conversation. But we care. Yeah. We care. Um, I think when Max was talking about, I just I thought about um, mm -hmm. what's at stake for Buffalo. And I think about my great grandparents that migrated here during the Great Migration from Alabama to work in Carborundum and still um, Bethlehem Steel. A lot of people from my church worked at Bethlehem Steel. Um, and so what happens when the factory shut down? What happens when we transition to a different industry? Um, chances are black communities, our economies collapse. Yeah. So we have to we don't have a choice but to be visionary. Yeah. We have no other option. Right. Yeah. Because opportunities aren't handed to us. Mm -hmm. So we have to think about, OK, so if this economy, if we look at the gig economy, we look at um, our, our folks doing Uber and Lyft and all those things are transitioning to artificial intelligence, right? So some of the lower skill jobs that um, we we use to make it to payday, yeah. we won't be able to rely on that anymore. Yeah. So we have to rethink our economic system. And we know that this current system that we're in, it's on the brink of collapse. Yeah. And that's not that's not an election going to get the left all fired up. Got to read the tea leaves. Yeah. And we know that that's happening. So Buffalo, we have an opportunity. We call ourselves a climate refuge city. Yeah, right? we do. 
So let's let's live into it. How are we doing it in a way that's innovative, that's making sure folks have the resources they need to live? Mm -hmm. Um, But then it also feels good culturally. Right. Like this. This is a vibe that I want to be a part of. Right. Right. Um, And I think that we can do it. Um, Buffalo has shown that we've been on the forefront of innovative thinking and culture and heritage. So a project like this is absolutely accomplishable. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering, too. I mean, as we like you said, some of us are going to have to shift our mindsets on like, how are we making our living? How are we approaching, you know, our economic situations? Um, And I think some people find it overwhelming to maybe have to switch careers or switch fields. Right. Maybe you're in middle age. Maybe you're in a different space um, and you feel like you're being left behind a little bit. What what would be kind of a solution to that? How do we reach our hands out to pull people forward um, and, and kind of pay it forward for the future as well with either youth or things like that? I know there's a lot of initiatives where youth in STEM and we're doing all these different things, but. What are we doing for people that are more in that middle area? Maybe they're in their 30s. Maybe they're in their 40s. Maybe they're in their 50s um, that they're seeing that there's this change. How can how can they participate in in your opinion? Uh I mean, I don't know if there's an answer to that, but. I I think it's it start. It starts by posing the question. Yeah. Right. Um, That we don't. um, Sky's the limit in how we can reimagine our community so let's not be intimidated by the opportunity um but you know i I know like my grandfather's age they are not learning even how to operate an iphone (laughs) okay yeah so some people you're absolutely right and we have to think about well how do we make sure that our entire community is supported and protected yeah that's that's the job of the young people you know? We have to support and, each other. We've lost a little bit of that, too, that community. I think yeah. we're, like, very individualistic now as a society, and mm-hmm. that's what, how we're taught to, like, you go to college, you get your degree, you get your good job. Your money. You may yep. take care of your immediate, you mm-hmm. know, but, like, that sense of community building, I don't know. I don't I know if that's here. Where, I think that's where the heart comes, the hard work comes in, right? The yes. And culture and the, the multi-generational learning spaces. Yeah. Uh, like, we um every year we do uh, a lot of intensive outreach, voter registration, <laughs> and out the vote work to get people activated around taking their civic duty seriously and voting. Right? right. Part of that we do multi generational conversation about voting rights. We talk about Freedom Summer. We talk about Fannie Lou Hamer. We got teenagers there. We we're along with grandparents in the same room chopping it up, talking about um, this is the history. This is what we went through. Yeah. This is why you, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Maybe I'll tell you a little bit. What to you, do. Yeah. <laughs> this is why you had that obligation to take advantage of things, of rights that people died for. Right. Right. <laughs> um, and a, a lot of the folks that were alongside them are still here with us. Yeah. And um, I think in the same way, when if you build that kind of culture of shared learning, of solidarity and of love, um, young people can bring along maybe some uncles and aunties, you know, to learn about some of these new initiatives especially around climate or around uh, new economy models um we had um sir we served as a sister city site to dortmund germany a couple years ago wow at open buffalo um so our youth action team they were directly connecting with teenagers in germany specifically around climate change um and they were like talking about things that they're doing over there there are a lot of really innovative things happening in like germany and netherlands um, and they're able to bring that back here. And at least the ideas, like Franchelle said, we've got to spark the idea, start the conversation. Yeah. Um, maybe they can, if, you know, we get out of the way a little bit and give young people some resources and some space to lead, maybe they could bring something and bring us along. You know? I love that. Um, I love that you empower youth to kind of lead in their own way, but also take the time to listen back a little bit. Um, I think when I was younger, my biggest mistake was not listening backwards like I felt like yes y'all did something in y'all day but y'all not doing nothing right now and I have to do everything like that was I was very disillusioned I was very like I don't even want to vote which I know where some people that's still where they're at and I love that you're trying and I've definitely as I approached 30 have switched my mindset on some of those things but it took for me to talk to people like my grandfather and my grandmother who were there like during civil rights who were like 
you think you're going through this for the first time, let me tell you something, right? Yeah. And so yeah. I love that multi-generational conversation that you all are encouraging um, because I think it's so important for that cross-learning to happen. And I've seen that light bulb go off in my grandfather's head when I said something to him and I've seen my own light bulb go off like, oh, wait, we're talking about the same yeah. thing right now. Yeah. And so I just think that that's so important. I want you all to just give the opportunity for to let community know how can they get involved with you all? How can they participate in this multi-generational conversation? How can we support you for the Ecological Justice Center? How, how can we do things to help you and participate with Open Buffalo? Well, um, we host, um, they can follow us on social media mm -hmm. um, for our next um, Ecology Center listening session. And it's it's just that we present the vision and let's hear it. Yeah. What what feels right about this? What do we um, what do we need yeah. here? Um, and we've been collecting um, incredible feedback um, during the listening session. So those are um, open to the public. Um, come and voice your opinion. Um, you can go to there's a survey on our website. If you go to our homepage on right on the homepage, it's um, it's the Ecology Center homepage. Um, and so there's tons of information that you can find out um, about our next sessions, the survey, um, look at a initial layout of the campus. So there's a lot of exciting things that they can find right on the website. Um, but the the major thing is that we are raising funds for the Ecology Center. Um, we have a goal of one million dollars mm -hmm. to raise this year. Um, so if um, if folks have it, feel free to give um, every every dime matters. Every dime goes into engaging our young people, yeah. having listening sessions, um, pre-development dollars, yeah. and doing that we know that we're living on some toxic land here. Yeah. We have to get that environmental assessment done. Um, so we, we have a very ambitious um, agenda this year. And so raising that additional capital um, will allow us to move forward in the project. Yeah. And, and I just want to reiterate, it's so important for us to invest in ourselves and our community. Um, I know we hesitate sometimes to do the kind of crowdsourcing group kind of funding um, initiatives for a lot of different reasons. We've been burned in a lot of different ways in the past. For right. Sure. But I just I, I see other communities building for themselves. And I and sometimes I I grieve that sometimes the black community doesn't do it in the same way. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just think this is such an opportunity for us to come together um, and support this project and support our community. Um, we're already at the end of the show. I'm so sorry, but I really appreciate having this conversation because I think we hit so many points that are relevant to what we're going through today, current events, how we're feeling. Um, and so just having this check in, I know this felt therapeutic for me as a conversation. And so I'm looking forward to y'all next listening session. You might see me there. Um, thank you so much, both of you, for being here. Um, I really anticipate the, you know, development of this project. Um, and anytime you want to come on and talk about new developments, please do. I'm sure the listeners would be really excited to hear about it. Um, so thank you both so much. Thank, thank you. you. Of course, this is Deja James with Partnership for the Public Good, or PPG, uniting over 330 organizations working to build a better Buffalo. It's the Public Good, Tuesdays at 10, 1130 a.m. on Power 96.5 FM and Mix 1080 a.m. Thank you.